entertainmentbuddha.com Haywood here from entertainmentboot.com, and we're going to do a special episode of Star Wars Time. Why is it special? Well, that's because I'm without my co-host. That's right, Nick, Tricky Nicky. He's out. He's with his princess, a galactic princess, that is, on a family vacation. So he's not going to be on the mics tonight for this episode of Star Wars Time. So we're just going to have to see how this is going to go. I've never done this before. Again, I'm doing it by myself, so I'm going to be talking a lot, probably too much, for those of you that have listened and maybe don't like me because of my views on the prequels. You never know. But... That's how it's going to go in this episode, special episode of Star Wars Time. So uh, we got a few things to talk about. We got some solo news to talk about or future solo news. Yes, future solo news. Let that sink in a bit, as well as some discussions on a new animated property coming to the Star Wars universe. So that's what we're going to discuss tonight. And like I said, it's just me. I don't have Nick. Who knows? Maybe I'll channel like my alter ego or another fake character. You never know. You never know. That's why you should listen to Star Wars time. But uh, this could be a quick one because, again, it's just one guy talking. And I'm going to see how good I am at doing that. All right. So let's get down to it. Uh, The first thing I want to talk about is definitely the solo news, which just caught me completely off guard this week. Um, And the funny thing is it has nothing to do with the movie itself. Uh, This news is about future uses of the Han Solo character in the Star Wars universe, which, quite frankly, if you're like me, you probably didn't think there that was even on the table. You know what I mean? Like, Han is Han. Uh, the fact that we're getting a, a standalone for him was great. I mean, it was going to it was gonna show him as a young person what made him the character that he was when we met him at In A New Hope. Uh, but based on a an interview that Alden Ehrenreich had, who, again, is playing Han in Solo Star Wars Story and the guy that apparently needed help and acting coaches, so on and so forth, to bring forth his performance of Han Solo... But apparently, when he was talking to Esquire, uh, in particular Alex Papademus, he might have let slip some pretty big news. And, and th- that news is, is the fact that he is apparently signed on to play Han Solo in at least three Star Wars movies, which I'm assuming includes Solo and then two additional ones. So here's exactly what went down. So again, this was an interview with Esquire between Alden and Alex. All right, and this is Alex explaining it. I'll do my best to read it out. He knows what he's getting into. It's a deeper commitment than just one movie. Even Ford couldn't quit after just one. I ask Aaron Reich how many he's signed up for. Three, he says, then flinches, understanding he may have just created a disturbance in the force. I don't know if that's officially uh, public, but yeah. Anyway, between auditions for Solo, Aaron Reich took a trip out to Death Valley. I stayed in like a high-end teepee, which you can rent out there. He says, I'm making myself sound a lot more rugged than I actually am. I'm also getting green juices delivered to the teepee. So, I mean, just let that sink in, people. Process that. Process it. I mean, he was asked how many movies he has signed up for, and he immediately responded, three. Did you ever think there was a scenario where we would have three movies starring a younger version of Han Solo? Honestly, think about that. Did you ever think that was even a possibility? Because I didn't. I surely didn't. I mean, when I saw this article, I was like, wow, that is really crazy to even just contemplate because I never even remotely considered 
that Lucasfilm, Disney, Kathleen, anybody, especially after all the troubles. Now, I mean, granted, maybe this deal was signed before Solo began filming, before all the troubles with Lord Miller and apparently the troubles with Alden himself. But I just I never envisioned that we were going to get more than one Han Solo standalone film. So uh, I guess you got to take it for what it is. I mean, it is what it is. It's it's an actor talking to a reporter. Nothing's official. I mean, this is obviously before Solo comes out because you and I know if Solo comes out and it bombs, we're probably not going to get another one. But the fact that he said instinctually three leads me to believe that, you know, both Lucasfilm and Disney have been telling this guy, yo, we have some pretty big plans for your version of Han Solo, which is, like I said, curious because I I just I never even thought we would go down that path. Um, It just... It didn't even cross my mind that we'd get more than one Han Solo movie. So I guess my question to myself and just to the rest of you Star Wars fans is what would you want to see? I mean, are are we talking like direct follow ups to what's going to happen in Solo? Because you got to walk a fine line with Solo um, because and I don't know his official age in solo Star Wars story versus how old he is in a new hope, but in new hope, we generally know that Han was in his thirties, you know, early thirties, mid thirties. Uh, so we can't let Alden's version of the character get too close to Harrison's version of the character. I mean, I understand Alden is not Harrison. Harrison's not Alden. That's my point. Like we, we just in a, in terms of Han's age, we can't let them get too close or it's just going to be like, okay, We got a guy that's 29 and a guy that's 33, and they look completely different because they are different humans. You know what I'm saying? Um, But anyways, I just thought this was very interesting. I mean, three Han Solo movies. What will we do? I mean, where do you go from this introductory? I mean, do we go on the... uh, I mean, I know at least one movie. I mean, I think one movie makes more sense than than two more. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, in the one movie, we can see Han now fully in control of the Falcon with Chewie, being a smuggler, doing his thing, and and clearly going and enlisting and signing up with Jabba, right? Like, we want to see, uh, or I could see in the second movie, where Han, this is where he meets up with Jabba, enlists with Jabba, and maybe even does a few successful jobs, but then he does that one fateful job that we soon hear about in A New Hope, right? Uh, because when we meet Han in A New Hope, his whole focus is, I need to get this money to pay back Jabba because I had to ditch a shipment of spice as soon as I saw Imperial show up. So I, I could see potentially squeezing a movie out of that entire plot. I mean, clearly showing other things be- that Han was up to with Chewie. Uh, th- that would be like the big end game or the big, you know, overall over encompassing plot point would be, OK, here's this big job from Jabba. I got it finally. And then he fucks it up. And obviously the fallout from that. So. Uh, like I said, I could see one more movie, but two more movies just for Solo. I don't know. That is, uh, it's it's curious. I just, I don't know how you pull that off because I feel like at that point, we're almost getting too close to Han's tale that we pick up in A New Hope. And I just think that's forsaken ground. I, I don't think you can go that way. It just, it doesn't make sense to me because of, uh, just time, you know, time in general and the age of the character. You, you can't have a character that's, you know, apparently 29, 30 that looks this way and then another one that's 35 or 36 that looks completely different because it's just, it's not natural, right? It just, it doesn't make sense. It's not normal. And uh, I guess that's my biggest beef with this potential extension of, this Alden Ehrenreich version of Solo into at least two other films. So here, here's another way to look at it, and I'll have to give Nick credit, even though he's not on the cast, boo. Uh, but he brought up the fact, well, you know, what if Solo is included in like a standalone Obi-Wan movie, just as like a quick flashpoint? 
and I'm like, yeah, but they couldn't interact. Or then, of course, the whole exchange in A New Hope would be broken. It would be busted. It wouldn't make sense because clearly Obi-Wan again would have met someone very important in the Skywalker saga. But for some reason, he completely forgets this person, just like he completely forgot C-3PO and R2. I mean, obviously, you got to put that on George. And, you know, he wrote what he wrote during episodes four, five, six. And then when he got the chance to come back for one, two and three, he kind of had to screw some of the shit he set up in four, five and six. So. Uh, it's just, it's interesting. I mean, the, the, the whole thing was interesting. I was just like, wow, really? I mean, really, A, he let that bomb drop and B, like, why? I just, I, I don't know. I mean, why Han Solo for three movies? Unless he's going to star in, in ensemble films, but I just, I don't see that happening, especially because of the timeline issue I've been bringing up, so... Hey, it is what it is. I mean, it's Disney's property at this point, so they're going to do what they're going to do to make that cheese. All right, so the other story I want to talk about is we had a pretty huge announcement in the Star Wars animation universe, and uh, this week it was confirmed that Star Wars Resistance, which Nick and I had talked about months ago as being this this copyright filing that was out there, and we were we we kind of hypothesized that it was going to be the next animated Star Wars series, but we took it in the direction at, in uh, this is going to be almost a direct follow up to Rebels, and we may even see Sabine in it or Ahsoka. Uh, but now that we got the official reveal from Disney and Lucasfilm, it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Uh, it is called Star Wars Resistance. That's guaranteed. So we, we do know that copyright filing was legit, and now we know what it's for. And it's for a new animated series that's going to premiere this fall, actually, this soon already, on the Disney Channel. And then at a later date around the world, it'll show up on Disney XD. Uh, but anyway, Star Wars Resistance, what it is, it's not going to be in the same visual style as Star Wars The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. So I don't want to say those were lifelike, but they were, you know, they were fairly, uh, you know, gritty and, yeah, screw it. They were somewhat lifelike. I mean, obviously, if we turned ourselves into CG animated people, that would be what you'd get in Clone Wars and Rebels. But that's not what we're going to get in Resistance. It's actually confirmed to be an anime-style cartoon, which I think is very intriguing for the Star Wars uh, universe, and I think it'll actually look fantastic, to be honest with you. Um, so, it, like I said, it's confirmed. It's going to be coming out this fall. It's another partnership between Lucasfilm and Disney. It's going to be on Disney Channel, and then globally, it'll be on Disney XD. Uh, so it, it's going to follow, it's going to be in the early parts of the resistance and which is kind of neat. So we're, we're going to see some stuff that we did not get to see prior to the force awakens. So everything in resistance will be taking place prior to the force awakens, which is awesome. I mean, because we're going to get some stuff that we have never seen before and potentially affected the characters that we do end up meeting in 7 and ultimately 8 and then find now you know and, and then clearly in the final in episode 9 uh but in general Star Wars Resistance is going to follow someone named Kazuda Ziono and that that's my interpretation of the spelling I mean his first name is K A Z U D A so I'm just saying that's going to be Kazuda, Kazada, you say tomato, I say tomato, you know, it's going to be one of those deals. And then his last name is spelled X-I-O-N-O, and that's why I'm saying it's Giono or Ziano, something like that. But either way, he's a young pilot that's going to be recruited by the Resistance, and like I said, it's going to be set prior to the events of The Force Awakens. We're going to get some cameos and appearances by Poe Dameron and Captain Phasma. And yes, they will be voiced by Oz, Oscar Isaac and Gwendolyn Christie, respectively, which is pretty sweet. Um, so I think that's cool. I mean, we're going to get this new character thrust into the Star Wars universe. And clearly it's going to be a character that is going to die Right. Um, I mean, he has to because we don't see him in The Force Awakens. 
So we know there's going to be a story there. We, we know there's going to be an impactful story, in fact. Uh, clearly, this is going to be an important character for Star Wars Resistance, uh, but he's probably going to have a pretty major impact on the Resistance itself as we see it and come to meet it in Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens. Uh, and the fact that they're bringing in main characters like Poe and Phasma, I mean, that's huge because that's just going to cement this cartoon's, you know, foothold in the Star Wars canon as well as its lore and so on and so forth. So, I mean, it's going to be a- another Star Wars cartoon that you cannot discount. I know we all like to just look at cartoons and be like, hey, whatever, it's a cartoon, it's stupid, it can't be that good. But I have to tell you, you're fooling yourself. And Nick and I have talked about this ad nauseum. I mean, especially with Star Wars The Clone Wars. I mean, that is a fantastic series. I've now made it all the way up to season five. This is my second viewing because I obviously watched it live when it aired back during the early mid to 2000s. And it just has reminded me of like, wow, this is these are the types of stories that I was yearning for in the prequels, especially clones and sith that we didn't get and it's sad because these stories do do justice to the character of anakin skywalker uh they do make him uh seem like someone that was conflicted and for good reason like they do set up that he had reasons to be upset with the jedi and to distrust him and to believe palpatine's bullshit that they were these corrupt assholes that were screwing everything up uh because they treated him like crap Uh, And he was a hero. I mean, Anakin during the Clone Wars was a pimp. And that's why Obi-Wan talked with so much reverence about him to Luke in A New Hope, even though he was essentially feeding Luke things from his point of view. You know, I mean, that's just how Obi-Wan operates. So, Um, anyways... uh, Star Wars Resistance, I, I'm I'm all for it, just because I've been a fan of these animated Star Wars shows since they've been coming out. I mean, I even like the Star Wars Clone Wars series that came out that uh, uh, Genedy Tarkovsky did, the, uh, the guy that did uh, uh, Samurai Jack or whatever. I mean, those were fantastic. And then just going into the Clone Wars, and then obviously Rebels. Rebels was amazing. You know? I mean, it kills me that it only went four seasons. Because it was a fantastic show. Um, so I don't expect anything less for Resistance. And I, I can honestly see other characters uh, making appearances like 3PO, right? R2, General Leia. Uh, hell, even Amalyn Holdo could show up. Of course, BB 8's going to show up. You know he will if Poe's going to be in there. Um, so I'm all about it. And uh, the fact that David Filoni is in charge just reinforces my belief that it's going to be legit. Um, Because if you don't know who David Filoni is, honestly, you're not a real Star Wars fan. And yes, I'm going to say that. I'm going to put that out there. It's That's a legit statement. Uh, Because Filoni is, at least since these animated projects start showing up, he's one of the most influential Star Wars storytellers out there. I mean, this guy, he was in charge of the Clone Wars, he was in charge of Rebels, and now he's getting a nod on on Resistance. And there's a reason he's getting that, because the guy is good at what he does. I mean, he really has not at least let me down over all these projects. I mean, I was just gushing about the, the Clone Wars narratives, and he is one of the main forces behind crafting those stories. And he did the same thing in Rebels, so... I mean, this guy is a hero. He is a Star Wars hero. He's a Star Wars lore master, if you will. Uh, So when I found out he was going to be the guy behind it, which I really did not surprise me. Uh, I just kind of needed the the confirmation from Disney and Lucasfilm, and we got that. So I'm excited. And and like I said, these will be coming out already in... Uh, not in well this fall so fall of 18 at least in the united states these will be showing up this fall on the disney channel and as i said throughout the cast they will eventually make it worldwide through disney xd so that's pretty i mean that's awesome stuff uh you know nick and i clearly we we caught on months ago 
when we had the copyright notice that the Star Wars Resistance was coming around. We wondered if it was going to be a video game, another movie. Was it going to be, you know, Weiss and Benioff's movie, the Game of Thrones duo? Was it related to Ryan Johnson's trilogy? And now we finally know. It's going to be an anime Star Wars series, which is brand new. We've never had an anime-style Star Wars series So I'm super pumped for it. Can't wait to check it out. It'll be dropping this fall. All right, people, like I said, I mean, it was just a solo cast this week, so I didn't have anyone to kind of nudge me down some rabbit holes to go on a prequel hate fest, and that's why we got things done very quickly, and I would say, I mean, 20 minutes or less. So this was a quick episode, but hey, it was still a new episode. You still got some insights into the Star Wars universe from yours truly. That's right, the Hammer of Buddha, Matt, Star Wars time host number one okay i'm getting a little full of myself either way i appreciate the listen if you made it through this uh, it was fun it was it was different it was difficult slightly difficult just sitting here trying to spit my own game for uh, you know going on almost 21 minutes but hopefully you got some enjoyment out of it i appreciate you listening and make sure to tune in to the star wars time podcast show which is on the best podcast for star wars fans and pop culture geeks network which you can find on itunes stitcher google play android uh, rss email whatever you can get it sign up just do it youtube to youtube.com slash entertainment buddha or just entertainment buddha.com whatever you gotta do consume it we appreciate it we love you and as always may the force be with you